You may have heard of Protected Audience API, formerly known as Fledge, and know it's quite a flexible platform. That may sound interesting, and you may be wondering, okay, but how would this actually work end to end? In this video, we will do just that. We hope by the end, you'll not only have a better idea how it works, but also be excited to get more involved. And if this does pique your interest, we have a second video to dig deeper. I'm Daniel Rojas, and I'm on the Product Partnerships team on Privacy Sandbox. Before we dive deeper into this technology, let's first orient ourselves on the Privacy Sandbox. Privacy Sandbox is a collaborative cross-industry effort to build new technologies into Chrome and Android that improve user privacy and give businesses the tools they need to succeed online, including effective digital advertising. The Privacy Sandbox consists of over 20 APIs that address a broad range of key ecosystem use cases that today rely on cross-site identifiers. One of those technologies is the Protected Audience API, formerly known as Fledge. In a nutshell, Protected Audience API enables businesses to activate insights from their first-party data to deliver relevant ads across the internet through real-time bidding in trusted environments. The beauty of this is that it not only protects people's data, but can also help to drive more effective results for businesses and publishers. So let's dig into it. We'll first start talking about the programmatic advertising ecosystem and how that has worked with third-party cookies. You might already be quite familiar with this and know it can be quite complex. So for the purposes of this video, I wanna focus on a few specific moments when third-party cookies are used and talk about them in very general terms. We're not going to describe what the cookies are actually doing at a technical level, but rather the high-level way in which the cookie enables the goal of this part of the advertising flow. With that, let's get started. Let's say a user is interested in purchasing a smartphone, so starts doing some research online. They do some browsing around, including landing on this product review site. They spend some time looking into the details and decide to think it over. Later, they go to check in on the latest in the world and land on an ad-funded news site. And on that site, they may see an advertisement for a smartphone based on the product review site that they went to. And as many of you know, that was able to happen because of third-party cookies. That's because going to the product review site said something about their interests. They were on that site to compare products, so that suggests they're in the market for a smartphone. So here, an ad tech could set a third-party cookie on their browser, and in their system, they can register, hey, this particular person with this third-party cookie identifier is in market for smartphones. So when that user went to the new site, that same third-party cookie ID is sent out and recognized by that ad tech company. The ad tech can say, oh, this is that person that's in market for smartphones. Then some magic happens and voila, an advertisement for a smartphone appears. That magic at a high level looks something like this. While we just showed this user browsing a product review site, their browsing is probably much wider. So as the user browsed around the web, ad tech companies may have observed each of these distinct site visits, setting and reading third-party cookies along the way. Many observe the same browser across many sites. With this data, they categorize this user in different audience segments. So now when the user is on the ad-funded news site, those same third-party cookie IDs previously set by those ad tech companies are sent to those company servers. They then match those respective IDs to their audience segments. Then in real time, they all compete in an auction for the opportunity to show this particular user an advertisement. The highest bidder wins the opportunity and show their ad. In this case, the smartphone. To deliver this experience, these parties rely on storing the user's activity across many sites in their systems. And while this certainly creates a relevant ad experience, there's a lot of user data that's exposed across many different parties. And some parties were able to observe the user's activity across many sites. With Privacy Sandbox, we want to enable a relevant experience like this, but do so in a way that protects the user's sensitive data. So let's see how this would work with Protected Audience API. Let's take that first step of audience creation. The user went to a product review site and was determined to be in market for smartphones. They then went to a few other sites that signaled other things about their interests. If that signal came from a single site visit, that's still possible without third-party cookies. Using a first-party or partition cookie, an ad tech company can still directly observe the user's visit on a single site and learn something about that user's interests. Now, of course, without a cross-site identifier, this browsing activity across sites is not merged into a single cross-site user profile. That's a key privacy improvement and definitely a core goal of the Privacy Sandbox. The question is, if there is no cross-site identifier, how does a user get a relevant ad on the new site that is by definition a different site? Protected Audience introduces a secure on-device environment that maintains audience membership. 
So rather than ad tech companies setting third party cookie and mapping this audience mapping on their servers, they tell the browser directly. These audiences called interest groups are then stored securely on the browser. Then as the user browses around the web, the audiences are added to the browser. Instead of these audiences being stored in each of the ad tech company systems, these interests stay in a secure environment, in this case, right on the device. And of course, the user maintains control to turn this off if they want to. That's accessible right in the privacy settings of the browser. Okay, so if the audience is on the device, how is that used to make a relevant ad experience? That's where the secure auction comes in. So with all those audiences on the device, the user then browses over to the new site, taking those audiences with them. The publisher itself or the ad tech partner they are working with can observe, hey, the protected audience API is available. They don't know what audiences are in the browser, but they can see they can kick off this secure auction. So the publisher or the ad tech partner can tell the browser, hey, uh, kick off an auction with these parameters. Then, similar to how things work today, a real-time auction kicks off, except it's maintained within this secure environment, either on device or within a trusted execution environment. Each audience independently competes for the opportunity, the publisher and the ad tech partners score them, and the best ad wins. Then, the ad is rendered on the new site. Now, you may have many questions, and we have another video that digs deeper. But before we do that, let's just highlight some of the core capabilities here that are distinct from how real-time auctions work today. Protected audience maintains audience membership in a secure environment. Advertisers can still reach the audiences that they care about, and users have more transparency and control. Then the real-time auction is executed in a secure environment, protecting this private browsing behavior while still enabling relevant ad experiences. And finally, all audiences and decisions are made by advertisers, publishers, and their advertising technology partners. The browser only executes code, leaving the actual ad serving decisions to those parties. So where should you go from here? If this piques your appetite and you want to learn more, check out our second video where Sid will dig deeper. We'll also provide some links to other resources. We have recordings for past webinars that go even deeper. So if you're interested in technical details like sequence diagrams, check those out. Then there's the documentation on developer.chrome.com. We're continually adding more content, so definitely a great resource. And finally, you can go right to the source of truth and check out the explainer. It's a more technical doc, but it describes the API design and all the detail. All of these links are provided in the description below. What if you're interested in starting experimenting this in the real world? Well, if you're a publisher, we'd recommend two things. First, if you're using a header bidding platform, connect with them to identify if they integrate with protected audience and ask for the docs on how to enable it. Second, connect with your ad tech partners, including supply side platforms, and ask if there are tests that you can participate in. Check out the public tester list of who's testing and many have put an email to reach out to. And for you ad techs, all the above is relevant, but you may want to start tinkering with code. Uh, check out our demo code in an accompanying video walkthrough in the description below. And you can link to the source code and observe what's happening directly within Chrome DevTools. And that's all, folks. Any feedback on this or anything on the Privacy Sandbox, see the feedback link below. Thank you for your attention.